Among all the characters that Guts has come across in Berserk, Isidro has to be one of the most interesting. That's because among his many companions, Isidro is the only one throughout the community where people have very mixed feelings about him. People love Casca, Farnese, Serpico, Puck, Ivalera, Roderick, and Isma, but Isidro has always seemed like that character that's been an outcast. Someone who, for some reason, hasn't fit in well with the group. I think if you ask the fans the question of whether or not you could take out Isidro from the group, they would probably overwhelmingly say yes. But I think in Kantaro Mira's eyes, he would see Isidro as one of the most essential members of that group. Maybe right behind Casca in terms of importance. Now, I will admit, I was never the biggest fan of Isidro in the past. I kind of saw him as this annoying character. I saw him as sort of lackadaisical, juvenile, and vulgar. Someone who kind of didn't take life too seriously and was a rapscallion. But as I got further in the manga, I started to see him in a different light. And my attitudes and my beliefs around him changed when I started to consider his dynamic with Guts. Now, as many of us know, Guts' adoptive father, Gambino, was a bit of an asshole. He was rough around the edges, he was coarse, and he even sold Guts to Donovan so that he could use him to his own pleasures. So, in terms of a father figure, Gambino was pretty terrible. There were a few glistening moments here and there in which Guts remembers fondly, but for the most part, Gambino did not care much about Guts. And the fact that he tried to kill him right before he died himself was evidence of that fact. So without a father figure in life, Guts kind of roamed the land, learning from his own experiences, not really having a guiding force, not really having someone who can give him fatherly, sagely-like advice. And that's a bit of a hole in his heart that he's never been able to reconcile. <laughs> And while Guts didn't ask for Isidro to be in his life, it actually turned out to be a blessing in disguise. What do I mean by this? Through Isidro, Guts gets to relive that portion of his life. He gets to vicariously experience what it would have been like to have a mentor, to have a father figure growing up. And because of this, Guts has to temper his own rage. He has to take a back seat and allow someone else to take the spotlight. And Isidro sort of reminds him of the fact that life can have a bit of levity to it. It can be carefree and it can be jovial in a lot of ways. While Berserk is primarily focused on Guts defeating the God Hand in Griffith and saving Casca's memories, it's also about Guts growing up. And I feel like after the eclipse, he stagnated in that regard. But with Isidro, he takes his anger and he puts it to the sidelines. And through this, he makes progress in becoming an adult. So in that regard, Isidro is actually a very pivotal character. He becomes the catalyst for Guts to take that next step in his evolution as a character. But more so than this, Isidro is a very fascinating character in his own regard. He's a character who wants to achieve great dreams. And while they seem fanciful and outlandish at first, you realize at Enoch Village that he truly believes that he's destined for great things. And when he sees someone else achieve great things, it makes him very disappointed. And it makes him very envious. Now, this is a really interesting juxtaposition because Guts' whole life was marked by being the strongest person. He always took up the biggest sword. He always defeated the strongest enemies. He had more strength, more speed, and more skill than anyone else. So his challenge was bringing himself down to other people's level, which he could never really do. He was a lone wolf warrior. Whereas Isidro's challenge is trying to measure up to others' expectations, trying to measure up to the people around him. He's not a very strong 14-year-old swordsman. In fact, compared to Guts at that age, he uses a rather small sword. So he has to find ways to accentuate his talents, accentuate his craftiness, and his ability to think on his feet. 
And again, because Guts was such a force to be reckoned with, even throughout his adolescence, in terms of using swords that were bigger than himself, it's interesting to see him give advice to someone who doesn't wield a big sword. To someone who doesn't have the talents that he had. It highlights that Guts was not just this brutish warrior, that he was always thinking on his feet. And he puts himself in Isidro's shoes and says, well, if I wasn't able to wield this big sword, if I wasn't this big hulking man, how would I give myself the advantage in battle? How would I use my limited physical capabilities to give myself the best opportunity to win the battle? And this is something we never saw him do in the Band of the Hawk. He never really gave advice to Gaston or Corcus or Casca. He was just the captain of the Hawks Raiders and they followed his commands. And sometimes he just ran off into battle by himself. So the fact that he's connecting with another character is showing a lot of growth on his part. And is showing the fact that he sees something in Isidro that he hasn't seen in anyone else. He probably sees a little bit of himself in Isidro. And I think that says a lot about Guts. Istro, in a lot of ways, is kind of an annoying character, but I challenge anyone in the audience to find a teenager that's not annoying. There's a tendency when you're a teenager to think that you have the world figured out, and that no challenge is too big, and that the older generation is just too listless and too tired to take up the challenges that need to be taken up. You see this a lot in shonen protagonist, you know? They have all this energy and vitality, and they sort of brighten everyone's spirits with their ability to outthink, outwork, and outperform everyone else with sheer willpower. And even though that Isidro has sheer willpower like a typical shonen protagonist, it's not enough. He's still one of the weakest members of the group. He's weaker than Guts, he's weaker than Shirka, he's weaker than Serpico, and with Farnese's magical training, he's weaker than her as well. Besides Potato Casca, he was the weakest member of that group for the longest time. And that's not typical for a shonen protagonist. And maybe in a lot of ways, this was Mira's answer to the shonen protagonist. Put that type of person in a senin manga where everything is darkness and death and depression and see how they react to it. See how their expectations wane over time and see how they get beaten down by it. But despite everything, Isidro shows a lot of resilience. He even has a moment on Roderick's seahorse where he shows a lot of courage and he snaps Roderick out of his days when fighting the pirates. So I think Isidro in a lot of ways represents the typical adolescent myopathy. They think that they got a clear picture of the world. They think they have a clear picture of themselves. But in reality, they still have a lot to learn. They still have a lot to master, and they still have a lot of adventures to go on. And now that Isma's been taken away from Isidro, he has a purpose in life. He has something that's going to motivate him going forward in the future. And this is a great parallel to him and Guts, because now Guts has to retrieve Casca from Griffith, and now Isidro has to find out a way to bring Isma back to the physical realm, if he can even do that. So even though Isidro's growth has been limited up until this point, I feel like it's going to substantially increase in the future. I think the best of Isidro is still in front of us, and I'm very happy to see how that's handled. Because I think if it's done correctly, he could be a character that really becomes one of the hallmarks of the series. I mean, let's be honest, he is one of the hallmarks already, but he still hasn't had that moment in which fans can latch on to him, in which fans can say that was his hallmark moment. A moment in which he resonated with the fandom. And this is not atypical for Berserk. For example, Rickard didn't have his moment until the Fantasia arc. I mean, he was always around during the Golden Age arc, but he was kind of a, a, a tertiary character. He said a few things here and there, but I don't really think of Rickard during the Golden Age arc. He wasn't participating in battles. He wasn't like a major character. He didn't kill anyone of importance. And then he still was around after the eclipse, you know, he was helping out with Guts' cannon arm, and he was fixing various things, but again, I mean, just kind of this tertiary character. He existed, he was kind of that last remnant of the Band of the Hawk, but he never really did anything that really stood out for me or the fandom. It wasn't until he slapped Griffith in the face that people started to really resonate with him. And I feel like if Isidro has one of those moments in the future, something that really resonates with the fandom, that people could look at him in a new light. Hypothetically speaking, if Isidro were to take down Locus in the future, 
I think his respect and his image in the fandom would change drastically. And I think now that he has that purpose, he has that reason to drive him, that fire in his belly if you will, I think we might see something like that in the future. I think something will happen with him in the future that will make people reevaluate their feelings about him. And another thing I want to mention is that Isidro has a natural foil throughout the series, that being Mule. Both hold about the same weight in terms of the Guts and Griffith parties, and both have a tenuous relationship with a girl who's around the same age. For Mule, it's Sonia, and for Isidro, it's Shirka. But if they were to hypothetically switch positions, if Mule were to go to the Guts' party, and Isidro were to go to the Griffith party, I don't think Mule would have the same impact on Guts. I don't think Guts would take on an apprentice that is just going to listen to his every word, who's going to exalt him and have no sort of spunk to his personality. And let's be honest, what has Mule done throughout the series that has made him memorable? I mean, I get it, he's not as silly as Isidro, so he therefore doesn't have those cringeworthy moments, but... At the end of the day, I think Isidro's personality really comes through and it really gives the reader more of a sense of who he is. Mule, at the end of the day, is just a very dry character that doesn't leave much of an impression. And the fact that he comes from nobility and hasn't really faced any harsh challenges kind of makes him uninteresting. I like Isidro's background. I like the fact that he ran away from his town. I like the fact that he's aiming for the sky and he's trying to constantly challenge himself and fight monsters that may be stronger than him, but he still takes up that challenge. But tell me what you guys think of Isidro as a character. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll catch you guys on the flip side.